How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? It's Mike from PokeTips, and today I'm going to be teaching you all about candy in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Candies are a new item in the main series Pokemon games, and they let you make your Pokemon very strong. By using candies, you could add up to 200 in every single stat on your Pokemon, so you could just imagine how powerful those attacks will be once you use candies. And the craziest thing is, if you use the right candies, you could do this from a very low level. So this level 5 Nidoran I have on the screen has stats like a level 100 Nidoran, but it's only level 5. Warning! If you're planning on using these stat boosts online, you can, but you have to choose the rule set No Restrictions for Battles. If you choose standard rules, all of your Pokemon are going to be reset back to normal for just online play. And if you're planning on using a low-level Pokemon online, well, it's probably going to get destroyed by a Mewtwo. If you've played some of the older Pokemon games, you might be familiar with the word EV or effort values. The candy system in these games replaces the effort value system, and instead of EVs, it's now called AVs or awakening value. In Let's Go Pikachu and EV, there are four different types of candy. Three of them are generic, so you have a regular candy, a large candy, and an extra large candy. There's a regular candy, large candy, and extra large candy for each stat in Pokemon. So health candy raises your Pokemon's HP, mighty candy is for attack, tough candy is for defense, smart candy is for special attack, courage candy is for special defense, and quick candy is for speed. Regular candies can be used on a Pokemon of any level, and when you start using them, you can use them all the way until your Pokemon gets 50 additional stats, or 50 AV points. After you do that, you won't be able to use any more of the regular candies for that one specific stat, but you'll have to start using large candies. Now, large candies you could only use after your Pokemon is at least level 30, and then you could use it to get your Pokemon's AVs or that one specific stat all the way up to 100 bonus points. And then just like the large candy, the extra large candy also has a level requirement. You need to get up to at least level 60 to use that one. And then from that point when you're using the extra large candies, you could finally max out your Pokemon stats and get it all the way up to 200 bonus points in that one specific stat. So for example, let's say I have a level 87 Dragonite and I want to use the Mighty Candies to maximize its attack. First, I'll use the regular Mighty Candy to increase its attack points by 50. Once I get it up to 50, the game won't let me use any more regular Mighty Candies on it, and I'll have to go ahead and start using the large Mighty Candies. I could use the large Mighty Candies to get it up to 100 bonus points in attack, and then finally, I could use the extra large candies from 100 to get it up to the maximum of 200 bonus points in attack. From there, if I want to, I could use the other four candies to maximize all of its other stats doing the exact same thing. It takes 426 regular candies to bring your Pokemon's AV bonus points from 0 to 50. Then after that, another 168 large candies to bring it from 50 to 100. And finally, to bring it from 100 to 200 bonus points, you'll need to have 445 of the extra large candies. Now, if you really want to, you could just skip using the regular and then the large candies and jump right ahead to using the extra large candies, and it's only going to cost you 100 more candies. However, extra large candies are more rare than the large and the regular candies, so if you have a whole bunch of them, it wouldn't hurt just to use the regular candies first, then the large, then the extra large. Now, like I said before, there is one very special candy, the species or Pokemon specific candy. First off, when you use a species specific candy, you can use it on the Pokemon and it will raise all of its stats at the same time, not just one. So let's say I have Chansey and I want to raise all of its stats at the same time. If I have a Chansey candy, I could just use it on Chansey and boom, it'll have a plus one in every single stat. Second, you could use these species-specific candies 200 times. You don't have to use any other candies with this. You could bring your Pokemon stats all the way up to 200 in every stat just by using its specific candy. And then finally, if you have a Pokemon-specific candy, you can use that candy on that Pokemon at any level. That means you don't have to wait all the way up to level 60 to use a certain type of candy on it. You can max all of its stats at the lowest level possible. By doing this, I was able to get that Nidoran that I showed you earlier, those crazy stats at such a low level. 
So if you can get 200 of them, the best way to use these candies on your Pokemon is by using the species specific candy so you can max out all of its stats at the same time and not have to use each different specific candy like Mighty Candy or Speed Candy to raise its stats one at a time. Alright, so now that we know all about candies, why they're so good, and why you want to use them, how do we get candy? First off, the most simple way to get candy is by catching Pokemon. Whenever you catch a wild Pokemon, it has a chance of giving you candy, generally correlating to what that Pokemon's main strength would be. I'll have a full list of what Pokemon drops what candy down in the description below, but generally if I'm hunting for a specific type of candy, there are six Pokemon that I'll go to because they're easy to catch and you can get lots of candy by catching them a whole bunch. For health candies, I like to hunt for Caterpie in Viridian Forest. Mighty candies, I'll be heading over to Route 22 to find Nidoran Male. Tough candies, Geodude in Mount Moon. Smart candies, Psyduck on Route 6. Courage candy, Drowsy on Route 11. And quick candy, we're going back to Viridian Forest to find some Weedle. These six Pokemon are great for getting those six generic candies, but I would always much rather prefer having the Pokemon specific candy because once again you could use the Pokemon specific candy and it'll raise every single one of that Pokemon stats at the same time. So if the Pokemon you want to use candies on is easy to catch in the wild and easy to chain, I would much rather go for that than use generic candies on it. Wild Pokemon are much more likely to give you more candy if A, you've caught a lot of them already, and then B, you have a really high catch rate multiplier. So like always, go for those excellent throws, get that combo bonus, and go for the Joy-Con Grip Synchronize bonus that I talked about in one of my previous videos for shiny hunting. But if you haven't seen that video, I'll go over that method very quickly. When you play Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee with two players, and you both throw the Pokeball at the same time when you're trying to catch a wild Pokemon, after capturing it, you'll get a bonus multiplier for having two throws at the same time, called the Synchronized bonus. When you bought your Nintendo Switch, it should have came with an accessory called the Joy-Con Grip. If you activate your second player in the game by shaking the second Joy-Con and put both of the controllers in the Joy-Con Grip, when you throw your Pokeball, it'll throw both of them at the same time, and you'll basically always be able to get that synchronized bonus without actually having a second person there throwing the Pokeball with you. Other than catching Pokemon, there's a few other ways you could also get candy in this game. One easy way is by transferring Pokemon you've already caught to the Professor by going in your box, selecting the Pokemon, and pressing the Send to Professor icon. When you send Pokemon to Professor Oak, you could get candy from doing that, but just be warned, when you send them away to the Professor, they're gone forever and you can never get them back. So make sure if you're sending things away, it's something you don't care about. Also something cool I noticed is if you try to send a shiny Pokemon to Professor Oak, the game will ask you if you're sure that you want to do that, because I can imagine how many people would accidentally transfer their shinies. I'm really glad this check is in the game. You can also play mini games with your Pokemon in Go Park to earn some additional candies, and I'm sure there's a few more ways in the game that I'm not aware of right now, so if you know any extra ways to get candy, let us all know about them in the comment section down below. Something that I didn't mention earlier, you can actually mix and match candies if you really want to. So for example, let's say you want to use candies on a Pikachu. If you really wanted to, you could use one Pikachu candy to raise all of its stats, then use some regular health candies, and then some health candy extra larges, and then some quick candies, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because it can get very confusing very fast, remembering what candy you've used on your Pokemon and how many more you have to go. Also, one last little bonus, you might have noticed that when you've leveled up your Pokemon before, you'll see a golden little plus one next to the stat. That little plus one is actually an awakening value like I've been explaining in this video, and basically it's totally random. You have no control over it, nothing you do influences it, it's just totally random. So if your Pokemon got a few of those when it leveled up, you'll actually need a few less candies to fully max out your Pokemon stats. Alright my friends, and that's gonna end this video on candy in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, please help me out by giving this video a big thumbs up because it did take quite some time to make. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.